Hi, my name is Brenda Kyle, and my company is Perceptive Healings. And the talk today is called Forest Bathing. And this is with the idea of healing, well being, and experiencing all the senses. Um, I just want to let you know I did this call live, and I realized I did not record it. So I'm going back and doing the call on my own here. <laughs> So if it looks different than what you saw when you were on, that's why. So I apologize, but um, this will probably be a little shorter anyway, by doing it this way. Um, and also there, there will be a, I'll include a, a little resource file, PDF, that'll have the books and website and, uh, you know, any resources like on YouTube and everything that you can reference. The reason why I wanted to do this is because with fall, it seems like the perfect time to explore the forest or the woods in a with a different intent, with a with a, a purpose that you may not have thought of before. But the the forest bathing, I'm I'm going to read one of the quotes from from one of the books by M. Amos Clifford, and and this person in 2012 founded the Association of Nature and Forest Therapy Guides and Programs. So very expert on the, on the field here. But I, what I like is this quote on forest bathing is a practice that belongs in each person's palette of self-care strategies. The reason why I like that is because with the habits I teach, the, the self-care habits, the yogi habits, one of those is on the sense organ care. And I feel like this is just like the perfect way of expressing that and, and, and using it to kind of, you know, heal yourself or find harmony and out in the, in the nature again. The other one, it's, it's from, uh, let's see, Julia. It's Julia. Plevia, P-L-E-V-I-A, and I'll I'll have it in that resource for you. But her her point on it is it's based on the belief in healing powers of force that is deeply rooted in Japan, where it is influenced by the traditional religion of Shinto, where all things have spirit. This practice is also backed by science. So if you research it at all, you'll find data on it that confirms that it actually helps like with depression, with anxiety, with, and with physical as well. It's just, a, they do a lot of research on the mental side of it. And if you think about it, our ancestors were more outside than they were inside. It's, it's us that has to get back out. And, and that's what this kind of does. Whenever you start off, you want to go in with the intent that you're going in to heal yourself, to experience well-being the calmness and being in the moment. And the whole thing is a, at a slower pace. So you want to, if you normally go in and you're hiking and walking and, and rushing through the idea is to slow down. And the nice thing is this is kind of suited for anybody because it, you don't have to walk far. You can walk a short distance in, you can go on a paved path and you can choose to go like at a lake or in a nature center, like in, in Blue Springs, we have Baroque Nature Center and they have some paved pathways and they also have regular dirt paths. So you can look up things like that on the national parks. That's, that's another option. Um, if it's harder to get out, you can, you can just even go in your backyard. You can go if you, if you don't have access to where there's a bunch of trees, but you're in farmland, you can go out on, in, on the land and just experience this. It's still going to give you that same benefit. You can do this based on your beliefs, your feelings, whether you just go out to be in nature or whether you're on a much more spiritual side, you can bring a lot more spiritual spirituality into it and treat it like a, like a regular practice and a ritual that you do. The other option is if you do Ancestral healing, or tar it's in Arveda, it's called tarpana. I call it lineage healing. Any of those things 
when you do that practice, I feel like that's going to be one of the best locations to do it is outside because they're so connected to the land. I feel like it's a, a, a very deep way to connect. And, and this time right now through mid-October is the perfect time to do this type of work. It's, it's just the most um, deeply connected time for it. And I think it's because of the harvest time when they were outside a lot. So that's, that may be why that's such a solid practice. But that's more advanced. It's not something you have to do. It's just, you can go in and do things spontaneously and just let things happen. Or you can kind of go in with a little bit of a plan. Do, do still prepare like you normally would when you go outside, um, you know, mosquitoes, chiggers, depending like in Missouri, we got, we have all those, the chiggers, the mosquitoes, the ticks. So, so you still want to make yourself comfortable. You don't want to cause undue itching and all those fun things. The other thing is if you, you may want to get familiar with what poison ivy, poison oak, sumac, all those things look like, especially if you know you're allergic to it. But if you're not sure how to identify it, go ahead and look it up and get a visual both on picture and in, in video if you can to, to see it. That way you're, you're not going to touch that while you're out there going off the beaten path. And I, I would recommend the first time when you do it, you go by yourself just so you can kind of experience this and see what it's like. And then other times you can take a friend, take a group, um, you can take a pet, you know, those, those are still good options to do and, and experience that. The main thing is just slowing the pace, being in the moment and observing everything around you through all of your senses. So when you first walk in, just go in far enough where it's quiet and there's not anyone that's going to disturb you and just kind of stop and start to ground yourself a little bit maybe and, and just take a few deep breaths, let yourself kind of settle and, and let anything that the activity that's in your mind, let it release a little bit so that you can just start to slow down and you can close your eyes for a minute and just listen and notice what you hear. You can open your eyes back up, observe what do you see? What do you smell? Just use each sense. You may not be able to taste anything unless you're on a more advanced um, process where you're like looking for wildflowers, looking for the id, certain identities of trees, of plants. If you're looking for um, any of those aspects, that that's a little different, but that's, that's just another thing you can do. You incorporate the things that you like to do or that you're interested in, or you just keep it very simple. But you, with your intent in mind, you just want to kind of let everything come through. And then if you want to, anything that surfaces, you can journal it and you can either do it you know, bring a little pack with you. You can bring, you know, little snacks, water. If you like to journal, bring your journal. If you like to draw or do watercolor or do any of those things, just bring like a little little set with you. The If, if you don't want to do that, we're, we're still bringing our phone in, even though we're not using it a lot, but you could use it for the audio. So if you want to record instead of writing, you can do it that way. The other thing you can do is you may take a picture. So if you see like a squirrel or a chipmunk or anything like that, take a picture if you want to, or if you see a, an, an object that's interesting, it's just some of those things. Um, but try to limit the use of the phone while you're in there, because the whole idea is to disconnect from, you know, from the devices, from the electronic stuff and just feel and reconnect. When you, when you go through the process, you just spend as much time as you want to. Um, you can even bring a little blanket or a cushion or something and sit down for a little bit, either on the ground or on a rock or 
you know, if you're by water, you can sit where you can put your feet in the water or put your hand in the water. It's just something that you totally design for yourself, the experience. Um, another way to look at it is, if you wanna look at it from a creative perspective, tell it like a story. So, you know, like if you're, Brenda's going on the trail to Baroque Nature Center and, and you know, just kind of play out all these things that you would do and, and use a little bit of, you know, the childlike attitude when you're, when you're thinking of the story and it'll kind of bring up some things that you would do or that you would feel, you know, when you notice the sun on the skin and how the warmth feels or the breeze or hearing that sound and the way it rustles the leaves. Um, notice your, you know, your heart rate and your breath. This is also a really good place to do breath body practices. So it's, it's another part of the, the self-care habits that this is kind of like a walking meditation, whether you're walking or sitting, um, it's, it's, it's quite a bit different than what, if you're at home. So you can do those, incorporate those things in there as well. And if you don't have a real breathing practice yet, just do something simple, you know, just like the belly breath, or they call it the Buddha breath, where you're breathing, making sure the breath is coming from the stomach rather than the chest area. You can breathe in and have longer breaths out. That's part of reducing the anxiety or stress or depression or any of those things that just kind of everything kind of calms down if you have anxiety. But there's a lot of different ways you can look at it. And it just depends on, on your feeling and what you want to experience from it. And you'll notice a lot of times that if you're with somebody else, that your conversation is a lot deeper. You feel more connected. You don't feel so pushed to do things constantly. It's a completely different experience. And I think one of the best things to do too is, is just like you have a beginning with an intent, you also want to have a closing. So you want to kind of have like a, a, a moment of gratitude when you're coming out. And, and that can be, I'm, I'm just grateful for this beautiful day, for this comfortable place, for the nice temperatures, for feeling calmer, any, anything simple or complicated, however you want to do it. But it's, it's kind of nice to have that gratitude because in nature, it's a reciprocation of relationships. So there's a level of respect and, and receiving, and that's, that's a form of you receiving and the forest receiving. So there, there's a lot more depth to this. This is just kind of the basic side of it, but there, there's such when you're on a spiritual path, your identity is evolving and you, you definitely advance this yourself. The more you're on that path, you'll, you'll do more deeply, deeper activities, deeper practices, um, special rituals, like doing the ancestral, the ancestral work. Um, so just let it be what it is to you. It's, it's not something that you have to do it. Like I tell you at all, just, just and be spontaneous. That's, that's another option. You don't have to have a, a total plan when you go out, except for the intent that you're going in there to treat it like a, like a therapy. Um, and you don't have to have anything wrong with you. It's, it, it can be just for the purpose of, of the well being that sense of well being and, and calm. There are quite a few books. I'm going to, list those out for you. And, and I'm also going to define how simple are some of them are and how some of them are more specific to certain things. And, and one of the books is more advanced. So I'll just let you know that. And then um, if you have any questions, just feel free to, to contact me either on meetup or in the Facebook group or any, any of those places, email. I mean, anything is fine. I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks for everybody in the group and, and I'll, I'll set up some more talks here. I'm just, I apologize. I'm getting over having bronchitis. So 
<laughs> I was going to do a lot more talks this month and that didn't quite work out yet. So we'll see you here soon. Thank you.